Hi, it's Louise at Spiral Bright Insight coming to you with a kind of forecast, astrological forecast for the month of May. Now, this is something new that I'm trying. I always tend to sort of focus on specific events, for example, full and new moons and other big events that are happening. But um, I just as I send out my monthly newsletter with a kind of um, preview of what to expect, what kind of energies we're working with, I wanted to take this opportunity to come online and share because I can go into a lot more depth, albeit quite still quite top line information. So um, you can see my dog Denzel is behind me, um, his normal spot. So um, hopefully he will stay sleep and calm and quiet um but if you are new to my channel welcome um if you are not yet on my mailing list and you would like to receive my monthly newsletter you can do you can join the mailing list by going to spiralbright.co.uk and there is a sign up option on the home page and um, so i invite you to do that if this is kind of information that you are interested in but um so May, obviously, almost halfway through the year, seems impossible that I'm saying that. And um, we are working, it's the fifth month of, of the year. So there's a strong frequency of the five coming through. The five being all about change and adventure and very much sort of marking a turning point um, where, you know, we've already gone through the one to four we have the six to nine to come still ahead of us, but the five is that middle point where we can look forward and back and sort of have um, a, a sort of a bigger idea and perspective of what is going on. Now, when we add the numbers in the, the May date, number five to the eight of the year, that is 2024, we are working with the number four, but it also is the number 13, which reduces down to the four. So the 13, four is very much the number that we associate with Christ consciousness. And I'm not talking about religion here. I'm talking about the frequency that Christ consciousness carries within it. And there are also really strong themes of divine love, compassion, mother energy coming through with the 13-4, also great wisdom, devotion and an awakening of the heart center and the heart energies. Now that is really interesting because we are also working with very strong Taurus energy. Taurus being the ruling sign of Venus, which is very much associated with the heart center and the heart chakra. So it feels that there is a huge amount of support in the background this month to really support us into opening our hearts and our souls and being much more um, willing to work with and welcome in and embrace that higher frequency of divine love and compassion. So we are still working with some really big energy of change however with that five quite prevalent through the fifth month and with the Taurus energy as well and these changes are very physical because Taurus is an earth sign. So we are working with um, change in regards to our physical environment, our physical understanding, our physical situations in many cases. We're also working with um, our self-worth, with our resources. So there's big changes in our finances, in what we need and what we sort of work on in order to have a happy and healthy and comfortable life. Taurus being linked to Venus is all about expression and creativity as well, very artistic. Um, so again, you know, we are very much working on what is it that we can create to provide a more stable life, a stronger foundation, that sense of security and safety that we all long for. But also Taurus brings a real sense of resilience and an ability to weather the storm and really um, sort of navigate these challenging times that we are moving through. We have just sort of looking at the chart and the sort of the transit as a whole from a top higher perspective before I delve in a slightly 
into more depth, we have a number of planets all reaching the anoretic degree point of their respective signs. Now, this degree point, the 29 degrees, is a very powerful point in, at the end of each sign, as it and it's often called the crisis point. And I talk about this quite a lot. It all stands out to me in a chart when I look at it. But it's really... It's an opportunity for the planet to really tie up any loose ends. And if they haven't quite or the planet hasn't quite achieved what it was intending to achieve while it moved through the sign that it's in, there can be a bit of a rush or a panic to get things tied up before the energy shifts and the planet moves into the next sign. So we have um, the sun is obviously moving through the 29 degree of each sign every month. Um, but we have also Mercury and Venus will be at 29 degrees of Aries. Jupiter is reaching 29 degrees of Taurus before it moves into Gemini towards the end of the month. And Neptune is going to reach 29 degrees of Pisces. Now, when the outer planets move into the anoretic degree point, that creates a higher, more potent, stronger energy because the nature that they are outer planets. So they have sort of a more powerful impact and influence. And Neptune at 29 degrees of Pisces is at the very final degree of the zodiac. So Neptune isn't going to stay at 29 degrees. She's going to move backwards. She will retrograde and she will move into Aries next year. But, you know, this is a very strong energy. Um, certainly it will um, sort of strengthen energies and themes of compassion, of creativity, of unity consciousness. But it's also going to require us to let go of what we thought we knew and our kind of what we're holding on to to keep us within our comfort zone. And um, so Neptune in Pisces is incredibly um, imaginative, but there's also a strong sense of illusion and confusion. It can be really difficult to discern what's real and what's not at this point in the chart. And often we just have to have the faith and be willing to surrender and let go. Now, we start off the month with no planets in retrograde motion because Mercury is now direct in Aries. But on the second, that is going to change and Pluto is moving retrograde. Now, Pluto is still at two degrees of Aquarius. He has got a long journey over the next five months to move all the way back to, I say all the way, three degrees, back to 29 degrees of Capricorn. So that won't be until October. But Pluto in retrograde motion really needs us to go within, to really connect with what is hidden and buried deep inside of us. And certainly with the recent Scorpio full moon, you know, I for one have found that a lot of that is coming up already to be seen. But Pluto retrograde is going to really invite us to access and connect with and embrace our hidden power because Pluto is all about power and it is through doing that that we can experience huge transformation. So there's also themes of control come up here um, but you know a really strong sort of um, signature of alchemy and um, and change and transformation but coming from deep within and as we know you know we speak very often about as within so without when we start to make the changes internally and within ourselves then we notice that our outer world shifts to reflect that back to us so this is going to be quite an intense time certainly as Pluto gets towards that anoretic degree in Capricorn you know he still has work to finish off um, working with sort to pulling down and disabling and dismantling old structures and systems that are no longer serving us. They're no longer fit for purpose. And so we're going to see a lot more of that in the second half of the year. But um, the energy is going to start to build quite strongly as of the second. Now, we also have what day? Oh, the same day. And the sun is going to conjunct... No, it's not. It's going to oppose crux in the Acrux constellation um, star system. And this is a galactic alignment. Um, but crux really connects us to a more spiritual, a more enlightened state of being. 
Um, it also is very much about transmuting darker energies. There's really strong themes of light and dark and sort of the polarity that that brings. Um, they're very strong themes of sacrifice and the fact and an 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 acknowledgement that we do have to experience hardship in our lives and trauma in order to help us grow and expand and evolve that is part of being here on earth we are not here to have an easy ride we are here to grow and that does require challenge. It does require pushing through the blocks, having things come at us that we need to work with. You know, not always pretty, not always gentle, not always nice, but it is always, almost always the harder experience in life that bring the most growth and the most um, reward in the end when you start to look at it from a higher perspective. And I'm not negating, you know, anybody's experience here. You know, I'm not immune either. Um, but certainly I have noticed through my life that when there are more challenging things that happen, I do grow much more quickly and much more um, expansively than perhaps I would have done had I not experienced that. The crooks, the energy of crooks also represents the ability to bring spirit into matter. And again, that seems really relevant here with the strong Taurus energy that we're working with in May. This is very much about bringing the experience and the wisdom and um, the higher frequencies that we've been bombarded with, bring it into the physical and allowing that to settle and then see how the change is affecting you and affecting us so you know this is very much um you know we are being rattled uranus is in taurus you know uranus is shaking things up and um, really challenging the status quo requiring us to move out of our comfort zone because there is an understanding that at, if we stay in our comfort zone nothing changes but um we have this beautiful energy from crux among lots of other galactic stars that i'm going to bring into this video which is really supporting us to bring that energy down and to embody it and to bring it into earth because that is what is needed to help us all shift so on the 3rd of May, we're going to have Neptune moving into that 29 degrees of Pisces, which I've already spoken about. And then on the 5th, we have what um, is described as Taurus Gate or Bull's Gate, which is the five fives, that double five energy. And this is one of the Avatar Gates because the um, it's when the sun gets to 15 degrees of each of the four fixed signs, in this case, Taurus, the bull. So this is really, um, it's a very powerful day energetically, but I feel that the energies coming through are going to be very physical, very earthy, very real, very tangible. And I think, you know, that is the whole nature of this month is that we are going to start to really be aware of the physical changes that are happening within us, within us as a result of all the extra sort of um, light that is coming in. And it is about sort of being able to adapt to that because it is not particularly easy. Um, you know, it's something that we've not necessarily had experience, certainly not here before, but there is so much light coming in that it is rattling and undoing all the sort of fixed and blocked parts of us. It is releasing anything that we've kept hidden, which is often almost always shadow um, size, shadow aspects of ourselves to bring them up to be seen, to be accepted, to be embraced, to be loved and to be integrated so that we can become more whole. But certainly this bull's gate um, sort of portal, if you like, is very much about um, working with that physical earth energy. Um, so it is very physical. It's very creative as well. And it's going to help us really sort of focus in on what is it that we want to invite in and create within our worlds, something real, something tangible. And I think we're going to start to really feel, you know, the big shifts that perhaps we've been feeling more energetically are going to start to manifest in our physical worlds and in our physical bodies. Um, so, you know, this energy is about progress. It is about adventure as well. I've already used the word resilience. 
Um, but it's also reminding us to make the most of every experience, to really um, appreciate, you know, the value and the gold that lies within being here, being on earth, being in this and on this and of this planet to really maximize the opportunities that we have. You know, recognizing that they're not all easy at all by any means, but there is so much growth available. And to be here at this particular time while we're going through this huge shift is such a privilege. And I never, ever lose sight of that um, at any point. So moving on, the 7th of, of May, we're going to have Mercury in a conjunction with Chiron. Mercury being the messenger is now direct. Chiron is our deepest wound of the self, of the identity. And so Mercury is going to perhaps give us access to a deeper understanding and more information that is needed to help us really work through this wound and see the wound for what it really is and what is it trying to teach us what is it bringing to us because we don't just have wounds for the sake of you know for the sake of it just to make our lives hard it is all orchestrated at a soul level to create our blueprint to bring through the most optimal growth in this lifetime so there's information accessible here on that day and um, to help us move forward and to heal our wounds hopefully and then on the 8th the next day we have the new moon in Taurus which is at 18 degrees one minute of Taurus very close to Uranus so you know this is potentially quite um, an awakening new moon it's definitely linked to change and you know things are going to potentially be coming through here with the energy of the new moon in Taurus that we don't expect but they're very physical and they're very real so again you know this this kind of theme of the real the tangible is coming through again and will continue to so you know change is going to be part of this new moon but what the change that is coming is for the long term it is you know it is real and we're grounding it in so um, I will do a video about the energies of that new moon separate to this one. We also have um, on the 10th, Jupiter is going to align with fixed star Algol. Now, this is a really interesting energy. Algol is going to be activated by the sun um, on the... What day is that happening? The sun on the 16th of May. And then next month in June, Algol is going to be activated by Uranus, which is Oh, huge. Um, but Algol is very much linked to themes of dark and light, which again, I've already referred to. Um, it is feared by some, you know, it's associated with the story of Medusa, you know, and everybody is terrified of Medusa and the myth that she, you know, her story. But there's also a really beautiful kind of frequency of goddess energy. And often it is that goddess energy, that divine feminine, that power, that potency that is feared. And, you know, outside in our external world, we have found, you know, I don't want to get too controversial here, um, but certainly the goddess energy, the divine feminine has been repressed, has been controlled, has been manipulated, um, I believe, through the fear of the power and the potency and the potential that it has to really shift and change and awaken. But alcohol, you know, is, about the goddess the divine goddess is also linked to transformation to shedding layers to getting to kind of the um the bare bones of your soul almost being able to look at your power straight in the eye without fear and really see it and accept it and embrace it and bring it in which again while um pluto is in retrograde motion you know pluto is going to be supporting this it's incredibly powerful and um, fixed star alignment um very intense but all linked to fear to control to power so that is obviously jupiter is going to expand those themes and then the sun on the 16th will shine a light and really show us how we can use that energy to um, I don't know, embrace a more fuller versions of us of ourselves. 
Um, so on the 13th, the sun will meet with Uranus in Taurus. Um, again, you know, this is quite interesting energy. This is about awakening. This is about change. This is about expecting the unexpected. We don't really know what's ca what can happen. But, you know, it, it could be quite volatile. But we have to realise and trust that any change that is happening um, is for our greatest good. And sometimes we have to be shaken awake and sort of, you know, literally... <laughs> um you know to, to wake to wake yourself or wake other people up so again you know if we focus on the higher perspective the higher expression this is a really positive day although it could be quite chaotic and then on the 15th mercury is going to move into taurus so Mercury spent a long time in Aries because of the retrograde. In Taurus, Mercury is going to be a lot more steady, is going to be a lot more um, sort of, yeah, slow, deliberate. It's going to be... Um, because Taurus is very creative and very much about the heart, you know, Mercury is going to be considering lots of other options. Um, very, very slow, very steady, very deliberate, very thorough, and also very creative. So there might be some new sort of creative ideas coming through when Mercury transits Taurus. Now, it will square Pluto on the 17th, which... Um, Pluto in Aquarius in retrograde. So there's going to be a possibly some information again coming up from within, possibly coming up from the ground from within Earth because um, Mercury is in Taurus. And again, you know, Uranus has sort of rattled things and shaken things up and caused some splits within our physical reality, within our physical world and within the Earth. So there could be information coming up um, because Pluto is obviously about everything that is hidden and concealed and um, so again you know hard hard to kind of predict what will happen but that could be an interesting day to be mindful aware of and um, on the 18th the sun will meet with jupiter at 28 degrees of taurus so again you know this is a really positive energy jupiter is all about expansion abundance um you know very much about money and creativity and ideas and beliefs so again you know there's um yeah, it's just opportunity and growth potential at this time. And then the sun's going to move into Gemini on the 20th. So again, this brings more of a sort of focus. The Gemini energy is much quicker. It's very sort of flight of foot. It is all about information, ideas, chatting, connecting, talking, and um, also sort of bringing our focus back into our more local environment and also bringing things, sorry, shining a light through on the theme of duality because um, Gemini is represented by the twins. So again, you know, we might be even more aware of where we are being split and where we are being divided and the impact and fallout of that on us as a whole. Um, now, um, there will be a trine to Pluto um, fairly quickly after that, after the sun's moved into Gemini. So again, it's about sort of having a deeper understanding, a flow of information between the sun and Pluto in these two air signs and um, bringing through, um, again, because Pluto is retrograde, information about power and control and, um, you know, what has been hidden is still very much coming up. But we also have the backdrop of the sun in conjunction two stars in the Pleiades constellation, which is the seven sisters. And, you know, I may come on and do separate video about that energy. But again, you know, the Pleiadians are very much part of our ascension story it is my feeling that they are sort of standing you know just to the side watching observing holding space waiting to make that contact and i've read many times that um when there does start to be more um overt contact <laughs> if you like, with our galactic family, that it is possibly or probably going to be the Pleiadians that we connect to first because they are so similar to us. But they are vibrating in a five-dimensional, five, five 5D frequency. So this is very much them holding space for us to ascend, to raise our consciousness, coming from the heart center, which is very much linked to the Taurian energy that I spoke about at the beginning and the 13-4 frequency. And, you know, sending us unconditional 
love, willing us to kind of achieve a greater level of insight and consciousness and understanding that is going to help us move forward. So that is really, really beautiful energy, very compassionate, very divine sort of holding space as the sun connects with these stars um, all at between zero and one degrees of Gemini. And then we have the full moon in Sagittarius on the 23rd. Same day, Venus moves into Gemini. Um, so, you know, this is very much about... Um, kind of being able to have a bigger picture, it's adventure, it's sort of sending us into maybe realms that we haven't considered or visited before in terms of, you know, what we can understand, what we can believe. Um, very exciting, um, very exciting time. And I, again, will come and talk about that separately. And then on the 25th, we have Jupiter moving into Gemini. So Jupiter is following the sun. And I forgot to say, actually, that the sun will um, conjoin with Sedna. I have done a video about Sedna's energies as well. So Jupiter is going to meet with Sedna shortly after the sun has, and which is going to activate lots of themes of, again, information coming up from within that has been held within our subconscious, deep within, in the abyss, you know, being brought up so it can really shift our understanding and our mindset and our perception of our reality. And um, But yeah, Jupiter in Gemini is going to be here for the next year. Um, so again really bringing a strong focus into towards information into understanding going to be very fast energy quite scattered quite re restless quite distracted potentially in the lower expression but certainly you know this is going to activate our throat chakra very strongly i feel because jupiter um, in gemini is working with mercury which is um gemini's ruling planet it's also going to activate and work with some of the cosmic points which are um the great attractor and the galactic center but also it will trine the the super galactic center as well so again more to come on that but you know there's lots of more information coming through basically and really boosting our understanding helping us to um perhaps you know be more aware of the division as well through that gemini and gemini energy and the choices that we have to make available to us so that's going to be a really exciting transit um just to come back to some of the fixed stars, I've talked about Algol already. Towards the end of the month, the sun is going to meet up with stars in the Hades um, star system and then Aldebaran and oppose Antares right at the end of the month. Um, so, you know, this is, again, very high frequency energy that we are having connection to. Um, Hades is all about creativity, about holding higher frequency, about being able tr to transmute lower frequencies, lower energies, darkness, bringing it into the light, clearing negativity and fear, which is really crucial in these times because there's going to be a lot of fear coming up, being shaken up so that we can really feel it and then let it go. Hades is the star of illumination and Aldebaran is the star of enlightenment. So, you know, these are really beautiful frequencies that we're going to be working with. Aldebaran is more associated with Archangel Michael, so very strong themes of justice, of wisdom, um, and again, anchoring those higher frequency energies in so that we can really start to work with them. You know, it is very much about having the opportunity to embody and bring it down to admittedly create some quite big shifts and changes but for our greatest and highest good to raise us up to the next level of consciousness so i think that for now will do i mean obviously we have mars in aries will be meeting the north node and chiron and um, mercury is going to meet with uranus as um he moves through taurus so there is quite a lot of other sort of things going on but i'm going to leave it there for now because i don't want to um make my videos too long so if you've got this far I hope, um, you know, you are as excited as I am about the potential 
thought for this month. You know, after a very um, challenging and eventful month of April, um, I'd like to say it's going to be more stable, but I don't actually think that is the case. I think we're still very much, you know, working with this really strong theme of transformation, but with that beautiful sort of um, energy of the four in the background, which is holding space, which is giving us boundaries, which is giving us structure to sort of hold us steady, you know, acknowledging that, you know, things are changing, but that we have to find our way to meeting sort of that point of stillness and that midpoint and that present, that point of presence in order to help us um, navigate and work through all these exciting changes. So if you are not already on my mailing list, you know, please sign up. Um, I will be sending out my monthly newsletter. I try and do it on the final day of each month. Um, I am very busy for readings at the moment, but if you want to join, um, sort of if you do want to book a reading to find out your galactic heritage or your soul purpose or your soul origins, you know, please do contact me through my website. And um, I think that is all I had to share. So thank you so much if you're still here for watching. And um, I look forward to touching base again very soon.